Welcome to 28storms.com. This is your cyclone update for Thursday, the 29th of December. We will touch on the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Grant in just a moment, but we currently have two active tropical cyclones in the Indian Ocean. One is Tropical Cyclone 4S, located out in the middle of the southern Indian Ocean, but far removed from any land masses. So the much more pressing concern is Tropical Cyclone Thane, as it's nearing landfall over southern India. Thane has continued to intensify over the past 24 hours, and it currently has a maximum intensity of 75 knot winds, and it looks as though the cyclone will be able to maintain much of those winds all the way up until the time the cyclone begins to make landfall. As of right now, the latest JTWC forecast track does take the center of the storm just toward the south of Chennai, India, but that city can still anticipate some very gusty winds along with some very minor storm surge and more importantly perhaps the threat of localized street flooding and more toward the south that is where you will see some of the higher winds and of course higher rainfall. That forecast is in relative agreement with the latest forecast product from the India Meteorological Department and as we can see the 51 to 63 knot radius of winds is going to be fairly localized but we will still be seeing a wide swath with at least 28 to 33 knot winds. Storm surge will not be the primary threat with this particular cyclone, but nevertheless, there will be at least a slight rise in the water levels, especially just to the north of wherever the center makes landfall. And the following is the latest storm surge forecast product from the India Meteorological Department. And as of right now, it does look like we will be seeing a slight increase in the water levels in excess of about 0.1 to 0.2 meters just toward the south of the city of Chennai. The latest SSMI satellite imagery as of a few hours ago does reveal that the storm is developing an eye-like feature which does support the maximum intensity of 70 to 75 knot winds. And this is just another microwave satellite look at the developing eye near 12 degrees north latitude. The latest microwave mimic satellite composite from the University of Wisconsin also shows that the overall trend is for continued organization and development of that eye-like feature and toward the very end of the frame we can also see an increase in the strength of the eye wall especially in the western semicircle. As we turn to the latest visible satellite animation we can also begin to make out that eye-like feature and the center of the storm also appears to be moving in a general westerly fashion along the 12 degrees north latitude line which would take the center of circulation just toward the south of Shainai once the storm begins to make landfall and as we turn to the enhanced infrared satellite we can easily begin to make out why there will be the threat of at least some localized flooding wherever the system makes landfall we can see that there is quite a lot of convection and associated shower and thunderstorm activity now the one bit of good news is that we are no longer seeing the extreme convective cloud tops that we were seeing just a few hours ago so the storm has more than likely peaked with a maximum intensity of 75 knots but that threat of heavy rainfall and gusty winds especially near the coast will still exist. Over the past 24 to 48 hours there was the general thinking that a lot of dry air coming off of the Indian subcontinent would funnel into the inner core of the cyclone thus weakening it right before landfall but the storm has managed to avoid a lot of this dry air due to the lack of strong vertical wind shear and without a lot of vertical wind shear it is fairly tough to get a lot of dry air entrainment into well-developed tropical cyclones. The low level vorticity max associated with the cyclone remains very strong and healthy and the latest wind shear map confirms the reason why we are not seeing much in the way of significant dry air entrainment. The upper level ridge that is favorable for continued intensification is now well entrenched over the Indian subcontinent extending out of the Bay of Bengal. Therefore, the vertical wind shear values are less than about 5 knots, so this is a very favorable environment, and luckily the system will be making landfall fairly soon, so that it will be running out of time for any continued intensification. So before we move on, this is one more regional look at Tropical Cyclone Thane. Right before it begins to make landfall, it's having one more convective flare-up before pushing inland, and thereafter it's going to quickly dissipate, due to running away from its energy source, that being the ocean, and also this dry air will begin to funnel into the cyclone as it begins to weaken. And elsewhere, we can also make out Tropical Cyclone 4S. It does appear to be in a favorable environment for continued intensification, but as stated moments ago, it looks as though the track will continue to take this system away from any land masses. And finally, this is the latest JTWC outlook for the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Grant. 
as of the latest update, they are still expecting the system to have a medium chance of regeneration into a tropical cyclone. And as we turn to the latest radar and satellite mosaic from the Bureau of Meteorology, we can certainly see that there is a lot of cloud cover and shower activity pressing through the Cape York Peninsula. But we do not have a forecast graphic to show you from the Bureau, as they no longer believe this system poses any risk of redevelopment. The most recent visible animation for the Gulf of Carpentaria does show a very weak and broad low-level cyclonic rotation over the eastern half of the Gulf with much of the shower activity located over northern Queensland. And the latest infrared imagery also shows a blow-up of convection directly over the peninsula. But as we see on the water vapor, we are continuing to see this trough continuing to exit out of South Australia pushing northward through much of Queensland and that is helping to induce a lot of vertical wind shear and that is actually partly the reason why we are seeing that most recent convective flare-up and although this system is favorable for more convective activity it is not favorable for the development of tropical cyclones. The latest vorticity analysis does still show a fairly healthy vorticity max but this vorticity center is more than likely going to become increasingly elongated from southeast to northwest as the vertical wind shear continues to increase and we can begin to make out the trough on the latest shear analysis and over much of the coral sea we already see wind shear values in excess of 40 to 50 knots so we are certainly not anticipating any redevelopment over the coral sea. The latest zero-z forecast from the GFS model shows what is left of Cyclone Grant continuing to push eastward in the general direction of the Solomon Islands and New Caledonia so we cannot rule out some glancing showers in that region but elsewhere we are not seeing any chance of tropical cyclone formation near the rest of Australia at least over the next five to seven days and elsewhere much of the Indian Ocean is going to be relatively quiet once tropical cyclone Thane begins to dissipate over India and our developing tropical cyclone 4S is still expected to be well far removed from any land masses all the way over the next five to seven days. So the main concern over the next day or so will be tropical cyclone Thane as it begins to make landfall. All interest from Shanghai and especially just to the south of there should be bracing for some heavy winds and some potentially localized flooding so be on the lookout for that over the next 48 hours and elsewhere the tropics are looking fairly quiet at least close to land so thanks again for viewing please stay tuned to 28storms.com cyclone for more video updates